<laughs> well, we're in a, uh, the final hours of our little residence here in Encinitas. We'll be here for less than a day longer, and then we don't really know where we're going next. So this is kind of exciting. We really wanted to, um, I think these calls sort of stem from a longing that we have to just be more connected and be more transparent and be more um, uh, open about kind of where we are, our process and what's happening, all that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, and um, and really I think a, an impulse to, to share, like we really feel like things are changing very quickly for us and we know for many, many others and boy, if there's any way we can support people or just share ideas or um, things that we've learned, et cetera, whatever that may look like, we want to create a, a, a platform for that. We know that many of us are kind of involved in the, um, let's call it the spiritual, the vast spiritual side of this um, <clears throat> big planetary shift that's happening and what we're all going through, what we're all experiencing. But we're also quite um, aware of, by virtue of many of our conversations uh, with people, we're going to be talking to someone just after this call for a future podcast episode who's quite um, in the know about, uh, you know, a lot of things happening in the, in the appearance, if you will, in the world. Um, and so we really feel like one place that we can help people is kind of share ideas and options and solutions and ways people have made all kinds of things work and actually thrive and be be quite in love with their life outside of the appearance of the mainstream kind of matrix style path. Yeah, we, um, you know, primarily up till now, we've been working on the podcast and this year we've become, we've both been part of a, a couple um, communities online that host Zoom calls and, and we've gotten so much out of connecting in the field together with others and we wanted to start offering that. Um, and it already feels so good to be here with you guys. And um, we definitely want to connect more, create more of a community out of what we were doing with OwnStream, uh, like Stephen said, and really bring together a community of people who are, who are finding their own way, who are getting to know their true self and, and leading their own path and finding ways out of kind of the mainstream program, so to speak. Um, so this is the first step in that direction. And um, we're super excited. We, in the structure of the call, you know, we just plan to kind of talk for a little bit and then kind of open it up. Um, does that still sound yeah, resonate totally. good for you? Yeah, yeah, it's nothing set in stone here. <laughs> We're creating this as we go along, so look forward to co-creating with you guys here too. Um, so yeah, I mean, when we, I, you know, when we first started OwnStream a year and a half ago, it was really about the idea behind the idea OwnStream was carving your own path, finding your own way, expressing who you truly are, and um, this idea of the mainstream path or the you know prescribed path or the program the matrix uh, being kind of like what a lot of us especially those in the western world i guess like our frame is the western world because that's the program we grew up with it's different for every person has their own special little package of conditioning that they grow up with so not everything may resonate but we all have this kind of you know story we're told as we were grown up about uh who we are as a person in the world and who we're supposed to be um, and a lot of the conditioning that we grew up with and what we, you know, a lot of what we've talked to our guests um, on the show, on the podcast about is about this idea of um, the work, the like work slavery path, sort of, as we started to call it, like, you know, you, you go to school, you become a good student, you get a job, you, you know, or you go to college, one of the two, or you go to, go to college and then you get a job and then you like work all of your life and certain job and you you know retire and then you maybe are able to live but usually you're too sick to do that at that point because you know you've been prescribed this like unhealthy stressful life of you know working and um and eating in a certain way that's not actually right for the body vessel and all of this and, and there's so much more to that that path there's all kinds of like programming that we that we have that that's around us that kind of tells us that we are this person and to gain value to gain worth in the world, uh, we need to show up in a certain way and be a, be a certain be a certain way. Work work hard, um, and that many of us that's how we get our that's how we get our value. That's how we get our identity. And then we, you know, when we start to enter a spiritual path, we start to just try to find the truth beyond that. Um, you want to talk more about the matrix? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, sure. You know, the um, <clears throat> we call it the mainstream path, but it, it's it's the the word the matrix has become so synonymous with the kind of small life that that people are are more or less prescribed, and that that without any sort of conscious work, you just naturally opt into, fall into. Um, and what we wanted to do is just kind of go through the varying kind of columns of how that system works and talk briefly about based on who we've spoken with and all the resources that we've become aware of all the the incredible options available for people outside of that very narrow framework um but ultimately you know the the um the truth is and i think knowing a little bit about the people that have joined us <laughs> that i can kind of comment on this is that teresa kind of talked about it as being a person and ultimately i think we all agree that we're not actually a person and um though we have agreed to <clears throat> inhabit a form um a form if you will an illusory form that is a uh, person like such that we can kind of go through um, a timeline or, or various timelines and learn various lessons and allow the creator to learn more and more about itself. This is sort of the agreement as we talk about it. Um, and so um, we're going to be talking about kind of within the realm of creation, what are, what, what is the prescribed path? Ultimately there's a um, more and more, it seems an, an opportunity to kind of pop out of that entire thing and understand this, from the point of view of the creator itself, um, particularly as we're learning that the veil is thinning and, and fourth density, if you will, et cetera, all of those exciting tantalizing ideas, they can actually be experienced more and more these days and people are doing that and that's very, very cool. So within the realm though of creation, there is a kind of prescribed um, life path that for the both of us really kind of met its um, maximum pain point through a job and um and so the the first kind of obvious way that this path unfolds is school and then the college reality and often for people go to college there's debt and then there's a job that in the case of my parents was about a 40-year deal and now they are retired and kind of living the big life um so this is sort of i think the heart and soul of this um this path of this system, if you will, and that at least for Teresa and I became really, really poignant when, and I think a lot of people are feeling this way after, for me at least, after being in a job for about, corporate job, um, five, six years maybe. Um, I just, it just the contrast between what that felt like and what I felt was really possible was so great that I devised another way to deal with um, what that job satisfied, which were basically making money and um so that's kind of the main that's sort of the spine if you will of that that path is the job the job part of the the cog in the wheel system and and i think like a pain point is often the thing that can lead many of us out of it you know like there's the what we know to be contrast now we now know to be contrast between who we really are which is this vast expansive creator and being of light with infinite potential and infinite possibilities, creating our life to belief in this very, very narrow uh, person and path. There's a contrast there and it can be many different pain points, you know, like, like the, you know, I was in a job for a long time and like, didn't understand why I was in so much pain about it. You know, like I just thought, you know, we will, we'll both talk a little bit about our paths in a minute, but you know, for me, it was like, I grew up believing, like, if you work hard, you will be happy, you know, <laughs> like, if I work hard, and I make money, or, you know, uh, just work hard, really, I'll be happy. And that's just, you know, nothing on the outside, no, no external demonstration, they always come up empty, because the truth is that the whole is the knowing that you are the creator. Um, so that, you know, that was a pain point for me, you know, like, you can get, I always think of it as like the distance you are from your true self, like, how far can you possibly go? um before you just break and and you can't take it anymore and you know people we've talked to have you know on the podcast we've had shows and they're all really about that they're about like the distance you've gotten from your true self as the creator and an awakening moment that comes out of that and some people it's health it manifests in health issues you know like eating eating like the standard standard western diet around like meat and cheese and like sugar and all this like consumption that's thrown Processed at us food. um and you know that 
or, or the stressful life or that distance that just holding on to emotional, you know, baggage associated with childhood and misunderstanding of yourself that can lead to cancer. You know, like there's, so we've seen people awaken through, through healing journeys, you know, like there's so many different ways, you know, addiction is another path, just this getting is so far from yourself. You're in so much pain that you just finally break. Um, and there's a lot of things that support this matrix structure. You know, we were talking about it this morning. There's like ways that we're just, it's really like, like the Truman show or one of these things or, or the matrix movie, like being plugged into a program, you know, the media is all, all about the same story The um, you know, people, we all, we all pass word of mouth, these same stories. And we believe we like pass on these notions that we're, we're raised in childhood about, you know, whatever you got to work, you got to make money. And it just becomes this kind of refrain. Um, so um, we wanted to talk a little bit about like our own stories with, with getting out of that and some of the work that we want to, you know, that we've talked about in the Exit the Matrix book and also about the work that we've done with others and we'll be doing with others around, around getting out of that, around steps to get out of that. Yeah. Um, you know, I think ultimate, one big theme that prevails through all of these is just, just extracting people from nature more and more and more very, very mechanical man-made environments, food that you don't even know where it comes from, um, work. Like I, I had a corporate job for many years and it was like, I didn't even, there was no, it wasn't like we were making anything. There was no creating necessary. It wasn't like a, a widget <laughs> to use that. You know, it wasn't like there was a thing. Even we were just dealing with all these kind of ethereal numbers and transactions. And it just sort of was like this very artificial world. Um, you know, so there's that path, that kind of spine of the system, if you will, that kind of creates people for a, a workforce and then there's the the food and diet you know in the united states at least i don't know what it's like in other countries we're taught that there's a certain way to eat and um it really centers around meat and the dairy industry is enormous here and really we don't need to get into too many specifics about that but it's i think for most people we understand this is not a healthy way of life because we're working so hard many people default into processed foods or fast food and and, um, you know, I know my, uh, I have family members who just eat that exclusively, uh, fast food. That's just kind of the way that they live. And this is obviously not very healthy at all. What we've learned now is that there's an entirely different diet, plant-based diet, um, that kind of within, again, the realm of creation seems to be um, the best diet um, for humans. You know, we, we know people too that kind of are very, very evolved spiritually that eat very lightly, they don't eat very much, but they often will have a little meat or dairy. So it's not to say that those are exactly prohibitive, but I think at a high vibratory state, they can, they can be um, consumed without too much harm. But for many people, that's, that's maybe not where they are. So diet and food is a real, th a real way that, that people's kind of frequencies, if you will, are dimmed. We're, we're kind of, we become so unhealthy that we become very, very, very much a part of the medical system, which is really designed to more and more just treat extreme disease rather than promote wellness. And this becomes like a real cycle. You know, we eat a lot of sugar, so people need all kinds of, you know, work on their teeth. Um, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, et cetera, are all directly related to the standard Western diet. This is interesting to you. Check out our conversations with Dr. Pam Popper because she goes in depth about really the science about where these, um, this lifestyle and this, this way of eating really does create um, an inner climate in the body for those diseases to flourish. Yeah, and I think it really is about like the, the idea of um, consumption versus creation, which is something we've been hearing a lot about lately, thanks to Anurag Gupta. Like this idea of like you're consuming, you're consuming, consuming, consuming because you're in a lot of pain usually, you know, this like, you know, people who, who are creating their lives, like it may not be as is significant to like, you know, eat a little meat every once in a while. But if what you're doing is trying to like, you know, consume, consume, consume as much as you can to try to fill the, the gap that's really between you and, and God, then, then that, you know, that manifests in, in poor health conditions. And so it really is about kind of creating, creating your life. Um, so, you know, I think we could talk a little bit about maybe our own experiences with this. Sure. Does that sound good? Yeah, you want to start? Yeah, I'll start. Um, you know, I um, I definitely grew up, you know, with this sort of mainstream notion of, um, you know, if, like I said before, if you if you work hard enough, you'll be okay. And you know, my my father was, uh, you know, he grew up in the Great Depression. He kind of made himself through a career in law enforcement, and we didn't have like a ton of money, but he like was very much of the notion that like if you just 
you know, if you work hard, you support your family, you make enough money, you're going to be okay. And that was like how his value, that's how he derived value for himself. And he tried really hard and he was, you know, he, he really did the best he could. And he was like a really great parent in many ways, you know, but that notion got in my head, that conditioning got in my head of, you know, you work hard and you, you, you gain your value and your identification out of that and you gain your safety and security out of that. And so basically like that was like the story of my life for a while was this kind of, um, you know, playing into the school system. I was like a crazy, crazy student. Um, and I always had to be perfect. I always like try to, again, it's like the consumption notion is like, there's never enough. There's never going to be enough on the outside to fill the, fill the hole between you and, and your, yourself as the creator. So if you are, you know, if you are, I would just like, I would get a hundred percent and I was upset. I didn't get a hundred one percent. Like there's just never enough, you know? And then that just continued to play for me, like for a long time, that notion, that striving notion on the outside of my own self-worth and, you know, through college and, and when I applied to law school and throughout my career, it just continued, um, you know, like promotions weren't enough. And, and what I was seeking always were these kind of accolades on the outside um, to make me feel okay. And I think that's a really common uh, we all have, again, like we all have a different little spin on it that we believe and we hold on to so strong. And for so long, that narrative was so you know, painful to me. It's like, oh, that's just who I am. That's just who I am. And I remember, you know, my awakening began when I was, I like was seeing a therapist um, at the time. And she like, she, you know, I told her this story. Oh, this is who I am. You know, this is my father, blah, blah, blah. And she like handed me a new earth by Eckhart Tolle. And and basically, like, that's where it began for me, because, you know, the opening. Mm. And I remember, and I talked about this on the podcast, I was on the New York City subway, and I was, like, reading this section of the book where he talks about feeling the energy in your hands. And I just could feel that there was another being there beyond this story, you know? And this, you know, basically what, you know, we call awareness, consciousness, um, you know, God, <laughs> whatever, you know, everyone has a different word for it. But this awareness, I could feel this other energetic body there and this other presence, this other changeless self that had always been there, you know, and that was this moment of aha was I'm not this story like, oh, you know, Teresa was given this name, but if I'd been switched to the hospital and gone to another family, I would have been given a different name, had a different set of conditions. And just tracing it back to that initial feeling of who was I at the beginning, there was this authenticity of, of um, infinite potential, infinite, um, infinite potential, unnamed uncabined um and i realized then that i still had that and the amazing thing is the power of this matrix the power of the conditioning is so strong that like i had that i had that awareness and i was leaving a job right after that i felt so free and alive and i took this cross-country road trip by myself and created every moment and was meditating everywhere and in nature and just like feeding this you know i was listening to abraham hicks and like knowing that i was the creator of my reality and then I had another job set up and I went back into this deep legal job, like really intense legal job. And all that stuff came back. Like I just immersed myself right back in, in the heart of it in the depths of it. And it became approval seeking again. And it became like, uh, you know, it just was like so unreal. It was such an unnatural way of living like the work hours. And I basically in New York city, like, you know, it was like between the commute, the job, you know, it was like, I had no life outside of that. Um, eating at 10 p.m. and going to bed and crashing and waking up again. And, and it's just like this, this like circle that, that we play in in the matrix often that we don't see our way out of. And so I went into a, a series of jobs over the years and all along the way, there was this current of service for me. You know, in law school, I was always in the public service group. I had nonprofit jobs. Um, and so I always wanted to serve. I was working in the criminal justice field and my you know, my call then was around young people in prison and wanting to help young people get out of prison and, and create different lives. And, and I, I tried at this like many different ways through jobs in the activism field, the nonprofit field, the legal field. And um, I never felt like I was making a difference. And I didn't know why, you know, we'd introduce another program and that program would get bounced because the person in government would leave or like it wasn't politically favorable. One kid would do something wrong, whatever. But what I realized now, you know, I, I, was, I was approaching at it from this very like within the matrix. Um, within the matrix perspective. And I always knew I, I, the heart of it for me was like, there's no real change happening for these young people. Like they may go on a different program, they may go on a different path, but they're still, you know, in poverty and violence and nothing, nothing's really like changing inside for them. And, you know, on, in my journey, I continued this kind of like really pushing at it and trying hard, even though it didn't feel good. And all the while in my own journey, I'm like validation seeking and climbing and all this kind of stuff. And the pain point finally came for me when 
we had Sophia and two years ago and I, we had moved out to California and I basically recreated my corporate New York job and lifestyle in the bedroom of our second bedroom of our condo and had someone else watching Sophia and she's crying all day and I wanted to be with her and and um, it was so unnatural. It felt so unnatural. And meanwhile, I felt like I still wasn't making a difference, even though I worked with the, you know, kindest, like hardest working people in all of these jobs, people who really want to make a difference. Never felt like I was making a difference. And um, and finally, like, you know, I we've been studying Ventino Massaro. And, you know, we found Ventino right when Sophia was born. It was like right then. And starting to recognize again, like this, oh, this recovery of like, I am the creator. Like, I'm not this person, I'm the creator, and I don't have to replay the same patterns. So it was this kind of like the, the beauty of listening to this message and at the same time seeing that I had recreated, I, I had recreated the exact same reality over and over, quit jobs, recreated them, quit jobs, had moments of awakening, recreated them. And finally, like, you know, it was this retreat with Bentinho and Anurag where they said, you know, what is your calling? And there's no excuse, get rid of the architecture in your environment that's not serving. And I, and that was it. I was like, I can't do this anymore. This is not it. You know, this is not my calling. I realized that, that that passion, that earnest passion to help young people in prison was really about wanting to help people awaken from the prison that we set ourselves in. We set ourselves into this belief that we are people. And all those young people in prison too, like they had this harsh conditioning about who they were. And usually these programs that were so well-intentioned never really got at that, you know? And so we will always replay our, we will replay what we believe. And so, and so I, you know, I said, my calling is to help people know that they are God, they are the creator, you know? And, and it was that moment that, you know, I quit the job. Uh, we started this business and, you know, we've been, you know, gradually we're in the middle of this exiting the matrix process ourselves because really the matrix is in our mind. You know, we create our reality, we create the external prison. So like we have been now kind of like, you know, we've been going into nature and, you know, just thrusting the canvas clean. Um, focusing on meditation, focusing on silence, focusing on nature and creation and, and creating this circuit that is a new, you know, creating the, creating the new reality from, from what's within and what wants to, what wants to be created. And so that's, that's sort of like where we are right now on the path. It's a live process, uh, but it's really what we want to help others see and do and be as well. Yeah. We don't even know where we're going next. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we feel like we're being called to Colorado. We've been to Costa Rica. We have a, a tentative loose plan to go back there in the fall and the winter, um, potentially with with some other folks. Maybe not. We don't know. Uh, but but I think in general we're we're trying to not plan because what we're seeing and maybe you guys are experiencing this, but things are happening very very quickly. Like every day, like I feel like I'm 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 being reorganized by higher self and into into a more serviceable, maybe more fully expressed, maybe less inhibited. I, I, it's hard to put, put it into words, but, um, but just more available, more in the moment, more available, more in the moment. And to really, the one thing we do know is that getting away from even a beautiful little community town where we're in and going into the woods for some unknown period of time, it could be 48 hours, it could be 48 days, I don't know, but, and just really kind of clearly detaching from everything um is 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 what's coming for us um that's for sure so if you're a fan of the podcast or you've been or at least know of the podcast then you've probably seen that we've kind of gone from weekly to every other week and we have a few really really great episodes to share but there will be a break coming up where we sort of let everything go and refresh everything and come back anew um <clears throat> i think that's and it really, and that really is about the wisdom of our highest excitement, you know, that yeah. like this, what we've come to now is that, you know, our calling is expressed through, through what feels good, what we're excited about, what that impulse is. And we have been excited about like going into nature for a while. We did it with the van last year, but we moved around so much and we really, they, right now it's about stillness. Um, and we're also excited about, about creating our own content, about, about helping others and and so there's kind of those both of those things going on and it's really caused us to take a new look at at all of our creations and and our physical reality that we've created as well and does it again does it like we came to last year about my job and the condo and whatever does this is this maximizing our ability to express our calling and, and our highest excitement in the world and that's that's the guidepost that's the guidepost because we have you know these backgrounds again it's the conditioning you know this like these planning backgrounds and we and we see that we we keep like 
like one of our favorite things is like going on Airbnb, like, like addicts, like totally crazy. Like, like we got to find the perfect place. We got to find the perfect. And it's this like desire to control the future to make us okay now or something. I think we all have varieties of ways of trying to control things to feel secure as people. And so like letting go of all that and know that our highest excitement in the moment is going to be the inspiration. And, and uh, it's taken us a while to see that even, even in our, when we're in the macro, we're following our excitement that we're not doing it on the day to day, that we're not, we're cutting off the wisdom of source. Like we're cutting off the ability of the wisdom of source by like locking in dates in our future that have to look a certain way. And, and we know that to be of maximum expression, a maximum service that we, we can't, can't lock it in. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think about sort of for me, like when did I grow? Cause I, I mean, my spiritual path, I guess, I don't know when that even started. Um, it's hard to kind of pinpoint. Um, I, I had a, about 20 plus years ago, I stopped drinking. Um, I was a college kid and just kind of rowdy and uh, pretty irresponsible. So I gave up alcohol and that sort of led me to um, question things more deeply. But really, I guess it was like a, I guess it was like a breakup a um, uh, bunch of years ago. Uh, I was, I, 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 I was an actor at the time and I was, and uh, I went to a party and anyway, I was, I, w I had been hired to dress up as a homeless person. This was in New York city and sort of panhandle through the party. And, and then eventually like join the act on stage. I was friends with them and perform and do all that. And it was a bit of a gag. And this young lady, like really, I guess she thought that was really funny or cool. I don't know, but she was really into me. And, and so she, I, I just, that it was a six month relationship. And I realized that once she broke up with me that I had almost nothing to do with it. I, I kind of opted into this, if you will. Like I sort of like defaulted, like she was into me. I didn't have any options. And so I just sort of like went with it and it was never really a great connection, but it caused me to wonder like, gosh, I just sort of fell into this thing. I, I rode this roller coaster and then was told when the ride was over and, and now it's over. And I realized like I had almost nothing to say through this whole process. And it caused me to wonder like, okay, what is my role in, in terms of relationships, but really more broadly, like what, what is my role towards anything? Like, am I just, am I, and I realized I had kind of opted into everything. Like my job, I just sort of was like available and I took it. This relationship was available and I took it. I never questioned anything. And I began to question things very earnestly, very deeply. Like, okay, what, wait a second. Like, it doesn't seem right that I feel this creative impulse within me to do and to make and to participate and to, to give and serve, but yet I'm not, I just sort of fall into things. Whatever, whatever is, happens next on the screen, I just sort of fall into it. And from a certain point of view, like from maybe a higher state of consciousness, that's actually a very good idea. But where I was at the time, very shut down and just sort of, you know, living out of my mind, that wasn't a great idea because um, what was appearing in front of me, I needed to kind of address internally how I was functioning so that that could change anyway. So I got really into like being a, a, a pickup artist. I was, um, I'll be very brief about this. This is a whole other chapter to my life. I became a pickup artist um, and uh, <clears throat> moved out to Los Angeles, lived with a bunch of guys in a, in a fancy house in the Hollywood Hills. We were all pickup artists. We'd go out to bars and clubs. We'd pick up girls. And I really thought that I was learning how to choose how to how to kind of exercise my own will how to how to kind of have some say in the matter now i went way too far like way off the deep end and suddenly this became like a whole lifestyle there was a book written about us um which gave me a platform to start my own online business which at the time looking back now i realized like this was all crafted by divine intelligence to lead me in the direction that I've, I've gone in since then. But <clears throat> this book, The Game, like, became like a huge bestseller. And it did give me a platform to, um, to start an online business and learn all about entrepreneurship. But um, that whole thing, I, 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 and I eventually became like a dating coach. I kind of took what I learned from being in all these clubs and bars and turned it into like something that actually, I think, helped people, certainly helped me. But the thing that I realized was that every client I work with, and myself certainly included, like I, I was looking for validation outside of me. And in this line of work, obviously, it was with through women and dating and success with that. And 
that was a recipe for disaster. And I really learned that I had to have some other thing more important to me than that to kind of give my life fuel and so that I couldn't be so dependent and needy on things going my way. This is sort of like the calling work that Teresa's talking about that's now for me and for both of us come so far from that. Um, it really sort of began for me then like, what, what else am I about? What theme is interesting to me? What do I want? What do I actually want? You know, forget about success with women and dating. And so this became like a big thing for me. I started teaching this and wrote a book and had a great success with that. It was really fun. But eventually when you get married, it's sort of weird to be a dating coach, you know? So <laughs> I kind of moved away from that business, I don't know, five, more than that, actually seven, eight years ago. And it was really kind of past tense for me. It wasn't really that interesting. And, um, but I've always felt this strong urge to create, create, create. We created, Teresa and I together created an arts festival in Brooklyn, which was a big success for five years. Then we left Brooklyn and it was no longer relevant. And one thing Bentino talks a lot about are these bubbles and how things kind of begin. There's a, there's a middle and then there's some, very often an end. And this sort of was a perfect example of a bubble. And what I was really doing was more and more kind of learning, what am I really interested in? What am I really about? What am I really, really fundamentally designed for here? What is my theme? And um, once the Beat Festival ended, which is what that event was called, you know, I knew that I had always been very drawn towards people who are inventing new ways of life, people who are creating things, very, very different ways of living um, in the, within the appearance, whether that's tiny houses or minimalists or digital nomads, people traveling the world and building seven-figure businesses. This was always super interesting to me. And I had always kind of tied that to a, a burning interest I had in freedom. That's how I kind of described an early iteration of my calling was I, I'm, I'm about freedom. I'm about freedom. I'm about freedom. But once you begin to kind of, at least for me, I began to work with that. I realized like, it's not really what I'm about. I'm really about becoming the creator and really knowing that going from like knowing that as a piece of information to like my heart functioning as the creator in the world. And kind of like Teresa said, we dropped this baby into our, into our family, into our dynamic. And she was this, she has been this spectacular catalyst. I, you know, if you have kids, you know exactly what I mean. And um, it's changed everything in our life and really accelerated it. And um, it, there's a, there's much more I could say, but. Another, but another webinar on that topic. Another whole webinar <laughs> on that, yeah. But, um, but since then, so what we did with OwnStream initially was feature all these fascinating people, including Bentinho Massar, including Nazra Mira, who I know m many of the people who are on this call know, including many, many people who are really trailblazing, really creating something powerful. But um, we also began to, to sense that we're sort of hiding behind these people. And it's one thing to feature them and also be fully expressed, but we were not. We're, we're sort of like, creating a platform initially was the aim of OwnStream. And now we realize like now this has been created by higher self. It's just a way for us to more fully step forward and really kind of help, help people who might be drawn to our unique voice, our unique way of seeing things, which kind of combines the spiritual path with a pretty comprehensive knowing about the appearance and how it kind of works and how people are changing things daily. Uh, so we live in a van or Airbnb, uh, <laughs> like, like we are now. And, um, and I think really at the forefront for us is to just become really, really more connected and aligned to our real nature and express that and let the chips fall where they may. I think that's kind of where we both find ourselves now. And, um, but as you could see, like, as we're both talking, like the real transformative element is this notion of a calling and like this, this theme that prevails through any person's life particularly if they're drawn to the universe or the community that we're all drawn to, I think, is that there is this sense of there's more to life than just making ends meet or even making a million bucks. It's really about kind of expressing this burning urge within me to share and, and help and, and steward and shepherd others forward through whatever their life path may be. And, um, and so in, in all the kind of transformational work I've done, whether as a recipient or as a giver through the dating coaching work I was doing in years past, it really is, it sort of all falls, it, it doesn't really work without this kind of fundamental knowing that we are the creator. 
I am the creator, you are the creator, and that this theme that I've been seemingly birthed with or that I kind of incarnated with to express, I will, I will feel, I feel tremendously satisfied when I'm involved in that. I feel very gratified. I feel fully expressed when I'm, when I'm tapped into that and aligned with that. And, um, and that is, as, as Teresa was call, uh, describing earlier, like once that's experienced and touched and tasted, it kind of wants to reorganize everything else. So it's not about, it, it doesn't really work, I think, for, for people like us to just try to find a better job or create a, a, a freer online business as I did for years. I, I wanted a business that I could move around the world with. Even that wasn't satisfying when I, when I created it. Um, quite simply because um, it wasn't fundamentally tied to this, this integral teaching that I have a calling and that I'm here to express that, and that that should inform all of these other things I'm trying to kind of rearrange, if you will, within the appearance. Um, am I making any? Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, yeah, and I think that it's, you know, it's um, the calling, like we believe, and I think many of the people on this call, you know, believe that, that we came here with a mission, you know, we came here with a mission to serve. That is why the call is so strong, and it's not everyone, you know, it's not everyone, but Many of us at this time feel a call, and people who are drawn to this, I think, probably feel a call to serve, uh, to awaken others in some way, shape, or form. You know, we all express it or may feel like different words or different feelings associated with what that call is, but we feel a call to, to help waken others, to help uh, raise consciousness on the planet in one way or another. And that may express itself as love, or that may express itself as knowing yourself as the creator, or... You know, there's many different ways to talk about it, but I think there's that we all have something that we're here to give. We 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 all we believe that we all have something that we're here to give, and um, and so it's about like really really boldly saying like I'm going to give that, and I'm yeah. going to like I'm going to shape my life like forget forget like what I thought I needed to be okay, all of these external things that I thought I needed to be okay, I'm going to give this gift, and and it's really a you know it's been a real process for us of especially like Stephen was talking about everything accelerating right now, like over the past six months in particular, or maybe the past year for us, but it's just getting faster. Is this like rapidly seeing these things we're still holding on to rapidly seeing the things that we're still organizing our lives around that do not serve this calling, you know, whether for me, that's, that's this like recurrent theme of like validation approval seeking in one way or another, which I, I finally realized that like, I'm using that kind of, uh, you know what I my pattern from you know is to like you know be what someone else I think someone else wants me to be and then get mad at them for it you know and I think that that's you know it's a way of hiding and it's a way of like of, of staying small and not actually being expressed you know staying safe is to like hide in others and that for a long time I held on to that as kind of like a martyr badge and now it's like this key to freedom for me it's like oh no I can't do that and now that I can recognize that like I much quicker can see it and don't do it anymore, you know? And also this burning desire to express this calling, this burning desire to express this calling, we serve is getting stronger and stronger. And, you know, it is, it is, you know, we wrote this, we wrote an ebook on exiting the matrix that you guys may have seen. And, and it contains these kind of eight you know, key tools and strategies to, to do this. And, but the, you know, they're all aligned with this notion, I think of like cultivating and finding and finding and cultivating and understanding and hearing your true voice, your true self, and minimizing, softening, eradicating the voice of the program. That's your unique voice of the program in your mind, you know, that you've picked up from parents and society and whatever culture that you grew up in, you know, in this lifetime. And so like all of those things, you know, it's, you know, changing your inputs is, you know, the huge one is about, you know, one, yeah. change the program, you know, for a long time on Facebook, all I got was like, I used to be really political and I used to be really like immersed in the social justice world. And I would just get a lot of, you know, what the message I was, I was getting were like really about that. And I don't believe anymore in like in fighting something, even if I see some, I, I still believe these things are injustices or, or maybe they're not injustices, they're creations of that person or that environment, but that they're not, you know, they're not aligned you know, but I believe that to help people become aligned I, is uh, there's a different way to do that, you know, which is to become aware of your own consciousness and your own calling and your own true self. Um, so I, I wanted to change those inputs. That's not what I want to hear anymore. You know, I want to hear about how we're raising consciousness and how I want to strengthen my own 
awareness. You know, I want to strengthen my own awareness. And so the messages I get now are all from, you know, from people in the consciousness space, really, to keep reminding myself, because that program is really loud. You know, it's really loud. I can wake up every morning and think I'm a person again. And, you know, for a long time, less, less, less so now, I would wake up every morning and have like just a barrage of like worry entering my mind and to-do lists mm -hmm. and, you know, got to get this done, got to get that done, you know, and it's like, and because because my value, my knowledge, understanding of myself was in like securing those things. And so, you know, the more we change the program and that's about like the media you consume, like the Facebook friends you who come into your feed, the people you surround yourself in reality. We've, you know, we've largely changed our community and the, and the people we choose to surround ourselves with because we are understanding and becoming this new reality. And to do that, you got to change that, you know. So it's again, you know, changing your inputs and then meditation, of course, silence, stillness. How can we hear ourselves? How can we get to know ourselves if we don't spend any time with ourselves? And I, I, you know, for years, for years, I was, you know, thought of myself on a spiritual path with, you know, and Stephen and I, you know, in the time we've been together, eight years we've been together, like I would watch him meditate every morning and I would like kind of get up and take a five minute shower rush off to my, my job, you know, and like try to find a couple of moments of stillness on the subway. But I didn't you know the truth was I was still hiding, you know, I wasn't prioritizing it. We can always say we don't have time for meditation. Like I said that for years and it's just, it's not true. It's like, you know, Anurag says like we make time, we, we have what we want, you know, we have what we want. And I said for years, I want to meditate, I just don't have time, you know, but oh, I created time for, you know, I created time for more sleep or I created time for uh, the food I wanted to create for myself. That was a priority or going to the gym or seeing a friend or, you know, it's, you know, it ultimately like, you have to really want to, to become, to become the creator. You know, it was safe. It's safe to hide in the person, you know, feel safe. Like we believe it's safe to hide in the person. And that's what I was doing. You know, I, I just kept going, you know, I'd get to work early and stay late, you know, to get those, to get that validation. So that's what I thought made me a, a, a real person, a value, valuable person. And the truth is that like, from the person's point of view, this is one of Ventino's things that I'm only now getting that I really love. It's like from the person's point of view, that's true, you know, like to, to be a valid person in the world, like maybe you, you, you accumulate things or like you're, you have a great body or you, whatever, you know, like if I'm going to believe I'm a person, I'm always going to be searching for things to make myself safe and okay. Like, but if I'm not a person, if I'm the creator and it's a vast, it's a vast wealth of infinite potential, you know, I don't, I don't need any of those external things to be okay, have it all. So really all of these tools and exit the matrix, maybe you want to talk about some of the others, like are really about like finding, nourishing, cultivating, understanding, expressing, being your true self and like minimizing and softening and, and, and ridding yourself of the program. And it really is like a, it is a process because that program and that identification can be so strong. Yeah. I think what we're really talking about here is how, <clears throat> what, so the, the program is very strong, you know, otherwise um, more people would be aware of it. And so what is, where can I, what resource do I have to help me override the program, creating something else? And it really is this calling, aligning with my calling and aligning and aligning and aligning and aligning with my calling, because that is really, it seems to, to us, like the, the source code, if you will, the opening into source that can, that can create through me. Um, because when you realize I'm not a person, it's not about me creating, but it's really more about me availing myself of the creator. Um, and so that, that's, that's a key point. And so that, that resource, that well of energy, if you will, or that, insp that source of inspiration is where I can create something new, something different than what the appearance would insist upon, if you will. Um, so we've talked about like uh, <clears throat> changing your inputs and within exit, the, the PDF, the, the ebook, if, there's, there's a, like a hundred inputs that, Other people, possible inputs. <laughs> that people can avail themselves of. If you want to just kind of like do what I did, which is one day I just recreated all of my social media feeds, YouTube. I mean, I will, will look at Facebook, Twitter sometimes, in YouTube a lot. And now literally everything that appears is just like, oh, this is great. Oh, this is so exciting. You know, um, it's, it's really, it really supports this new path. And when something comes in, that's just not of that. I immediately either unfollow the person or, um, yeah, I usually just unfollow the person. Um, 
so within the, the ebook itself, there's a lot of inputs uh, to to recreate around. Uh, and unfollowing people is beautiful. Then you don't have to kind of unfriend them, um, but you can unfollow them so that their content is not shared on your timeline, which is really, really a nifty little tool. Um, <clears throat> I know a lot of people kind of go in and just unfriend people. But uh, we've cho I've at least for now, have chosen not to do that. We have all kinds of people who think we're in a cult, think we're crazy, we've lost our way, et cetera. We've got family members stalking us online. <laughs> we must be doing something right. They're having all, there's like a whole text thread apparently on somebody's phone, which people talking about Teresa and Steven, how they fucking lost their mind. But, um, <laughs> and you know what? Like we thought about, I've thought about anyway, like defriending people or whatever. And you know, but we keep believing, because I keep thinking, oh, you know, are my Facebook friends, like, the most hospitable environment for this message? And you know what? We, we have this belief that, like, it's possible that it's going to reach somebody there, you know? So yeah, that's kind of why we know haven't that, done like, it. You have a thousand friends <laughs> if there's one friend. And he asked me this the other day. That you know. Yeah. That will, a year from now, completely change their life based on one or two things you may share. Would you eliminate all those friends? I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Who cares what these people think? I mean, That's it. most yeah. of them, most times they just keep quiet anyway, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> but like if you knew that one person's life would be irrevocably changed and improved because of something you shared, then that's like a whole, that, that completely changes the paradigm. So anyway, um, changing the inputs, uh, consistent meditation practice. For us, there's a lot of nature involved. We like to go into nature and something, just being on a trail for three hours, just yeah, my my whole perspective on the world shifts in that moment. Like that's a very very powerful thing. Nature has so much to help and support us with. I think travel, other than a vacation, is really really useful. Um, some of the most important lessons I've learned over the years about just seeing people live a completely different way of life was traveling. We went on our honeymoon to Bali, and it was just wonderful seeing how people had such an intimate relationship with their neighbors and with the land and with their, their spiritual life. Their, their, their life did not revolve around work at all. It's, just, it's, a, it's a different reflection. It's a different impression, which is immensely helpful. Um, these are like little tools or things that can kind of help bring one into a deeper relationship with oneself, certainly, I think. The spiritual practice meditation is probably the most useful. Um, and some other things that I specifically um, that have helped me is just to kind of notice, like, what am I naturally interested in? What is just, if I had an hour's free time, what would I do with that? Um, you know, what, if, I, if I had an hour's free time and I was going to watch a movie or, or, or read about something or learn about something, what would that be? That's probably tied into my calling in some form or another. And then um, the big one that, that Anurag talks a lot about is like, look at the last week or month of your life and like spot one or two moments where you were just the most joyful. And literally every time it, it is something to do with, I've kind of gotten out of myself. I'm helping somebody else, it, often our daughter, you know, and she's the teacher, like, by the way, like, I, I don't know what we've taught her, maybe a few words, but that's about it. Like, she's words. literally teaching us <laughs> constantly, but how to play, how to be sourceful, how to create, forgetting agendas, forgetting time, just like having fun in the moment. Like, it's just natural. She hasn't learned not to do that yet. Um, so anyway, like, that's really, really helpful, too, is to... Um, is to like just notice when I've been most joyful. And the theme that tends to prevail in uncovering and really aligning with one's calling is that it tends to be about what do I want to give? What do I, how do I want to serve? What do I want to create for other people? What is it that I want other people to experience? And um, for me, I've always kind of felt like um, what this looks like is I'll learn something and, and I immediately need to share it with somebody else. It's like really about kind of amplifying and serving and helping other people. Yeah. So I know we could go through more some of what's in the in the ebook, but um or some of the other things we've well, I think used. We but I think we, we want to open on up other calls. Yeah. Right? We do want it. So our tentative plan now is to do this the next few weeks and just sort of see how it goes. If people like kind of this forum or this format or talking with us, hearing us talk. Um then we probably will we'll, talk a little less on future ones. Maybe. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> but uh definitely want to open it up to you know any sharings if you guys want about you know why you're here or you know things that have resonated or questions you have or ways that you're that you're doing some of this yourselves um if you guys want to share with the group and when we do want this to be really interactive these calls be more interactive so i think in this first one we've talked a lot but um 
But if there's anyone who wants to share anything, we'd love you to can, you can hear from raise you. your hand if your video is working, or you can raise, Just raise your, your hand. virtual hand <laughs> if you know how to do that. Um, you can go to uh, manage. You can go to the participants button down below. Click that, and then there's an opportunity there to raise your hand, or you can just do this. Um, Frank. Cool, Frank. You know, well, <laughs> I think you can unmute yourself, but I'll unmute you here. Cool. Thank you, guys. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. <laughs> thanks for being here, and thanks for joining me. Thanks for opening this up, man. It's really uh, uh, cool. There are a lot of things because it was a big story, so <laughs> a lot of things are. Uh, opening up but first thing is um yeah i'm definitely up for um co-creating and i don't think we are the only ones i think there's the big shift now in also in spiritual label i call because the spiritual world is also a big systematic thing as 95% of everything is system, as you call it. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's, I'm really up for that, like the co-creation. And for me, the most interesting part now is to, to feel what it is to be in co-creation with another awakened being. Mm. I think that's, that's the next, Mm. exciting level to uh, to experience yeah yeah cool that's a, a big theme for us as you can imagine <laughs> uh -huh. i feel that yeah cool. <laughs> right tell us more are you is that like a relationship or a, a partner in some facet fashion a project or is it just for really... us or this group or yeah, other yeah. groups or could you specify that, please? Well, when you when you speak about your your current interest in co-creation, is there like a live mm -hmm. example of that, like uh, that you could share more about? Ah, okay. Oh, um, well, it, it's in a lot of aspects. Like, life is about a lot of things. Mainly now uh, in my life. It's actually the physical living together. Um, and the other thing is that specifically to you two guys, I resonate with, with you, Teresa. I'm, it's no wonder that you've been working with young adults in prison. Um, I feel a huge resonance there. Also in schooling, uh, children. Mm -hmm. uh, like yesterday, I had the perfect new way of teaching. Like we completely need new way of teaching. Like from now on, stop geography, stop history, start working on emotions, start working on body, on relationships. That's that's the new thing. So yeah, we're right let's there. Do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, 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 and we know some, we, uh, we've been hearing about some people working on new ways of educating. That's an interest mm -hmm. of ours. Um, not something we've been that actively involved in yet, except in envisioning what we might want for Sophia. She's two now. Um, but that's really a live interest of ours, too. So that may, that may come back around for sure. And, we know, and we, I know a few people who are working on some things. So mm -hmm. that's exciting. Yeah, there's apparently a, a woman in the Netherlands who has a school based on Bentinho's teachings, which is really cool, I'm sure. Um, we've been naturally drawn to world schoolers. Um, we're friends with a, um, a woman who's unschooled all three of her kids, um, and they're like super interesting. Um, yeah, for us, it's sort of like a, a day at a time. We kind of watch our daughter, what she's naturally interested in, and kind of just sort of follow her lead, follow her lead. While at the same time, because we move around a lot, one of the challenges is like helping her understand socializing, being with other kids. Um, so we kind of naturally, we, we've found ways to kind of create moments where she can kind of be with other kids and even kind of begin to kind of create connections and relationships with them, though that's a little 
not quite the time for that. Um, but we really want to be in community where she could be around other yeah. other kids on this, you know, yeah, with this parents. understanding. Uh, so that's that's something that we're see, you know seeking to create as well. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Thanks, Frank. Thank you, Frank. It's a lot. There's a lot of things coming up. Um, I don't think this is the place to really go into that, but. Um, yeah, I'm definitely excited to cool. go deep in this. Yeah. Cool. cool, yeah, yeah, Very yeah. Cool. Yeah, sweet. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Brigitte. I'm back. <laughs> um, <clears throat> wow, guys, it's really good to see you. Um, so much of what you said, I didn't take any notes, <laughs> but you know, I think, um, I think what, uh, what I find so cool, the moment, what I'm really enjoying at the moment is this whole, uh, growth, this whole unfolding can feel like such a, an inward and personal journey. And so then we get a part of these communities, Bentino's being one and Nazareth has one and um anthony had or has one and um it can sometimes feel a little bit like some separation is happening and then then i hear this and i realize we're all working on the same things i can't be presumptuous but this undercurrent that we're all exposing and in some ways it's obvious it's going to be the same thing right but it's like we're all unfolding the same things doesn't matter how we're going about it and even people in my life it's funny how you say there are people, family members that are worried about your sanity. <laughs> I laugh. I have members of my direct family that feel that way. And um, it's not that I don't care, but the draw, the, the, it's not even a draw. It's like, I am this. So how can I not do this? How can I not be this? How can I not move forward in this? And I'm feeling that same strength of direction from so many other people. So for myself, I've had to work largely on my own for a little while just because I needed to um, know what I am outside of all this meaning I'd given to this illusion of my life. Mm -hmm. And so as that is anchoring in, and I, I'm sure that, that people know what I mean because they're all doing the same work. It's so fun to see how now we're starting to look to each other. And like I think Frank just said, the idea of doing this together. So literally sharing space together, but staying in the heart. And so it's one thing to do that online, but to do that in the physical presence of others is something that I haven't leapt into. And actually in about two weeks, we're going to do that at my house with a few people. And it feels like the next step. Awesome. So, you know, like in meditation or online, when we have these calls and we drop into the space and we, we start smiling and we feel all this cool stuff. But to then integrate that, I don't know where everyone else is at, but to then fully integrate that step into my life and stay in that space, that has been like a turning inside out of my reality that it kind of keeps flipping back and forth at the moment. It's not stable yet. And I feel that by joining with other people, whatever that means, um, it's going to solidify that. It's going to, uh, I don't know if that makes sense. <clears throat> so I love what you guys are doing. Um, what else, what else did you talk about that I wanted to address? Nothing really. You guys, this is a great job <laughs> totally explaining. I love everything that you said. It was wonderful. The schooling is another thing for me, um, that you guys just brought up and, um, I'm excited to see what happens. Oh, that was a thing. So I'd love to say that I'm somebody to step forward and create an entire thing and be the be the center hub of these things but I'm finding that I have so much inspiration and so much I'm I, I don't care about my life in the sense that I'm not holding on to any particular thing at the moment and I'm happy to jump into things I'm actually excited to jump into things so I'm not waiting but what it what I do feel is that it's easier for me when it's not just me and so for example if someone already starts a program with a school or not a school, but you know what I mean, a new version of education and they want help. I can be such an independent uh, contribution, but I'd rather contribute than start something and engage other people. So um, 
Yeah, so and so we all have different roles. We all have different places where we seem to be finding our our spot. Yeah. So I could keep talking, but that's the gist of it. It's really nice to see you guys. What is the <laughs> gathering or what is the, the, yeah, the kind of bringing happening? into the physical that you have coming up? Um, so I, I've been quite um, active, if that's the word, um, with Nazareth's community. Um, Bentino, is, I, I don't want to separate the two, but when Bentino started his tier program, I simply couldn't afford it. So that's the only reason I didn't engage in that direction. But it's really interesting because it seems that we're, we're working on such ridiculously similar stuff, probably because there's really only, there's not one way to get there, but the issues that come up tend to be so similar. You know, we're all human, right? Or you know what I mean? We all have been pretending to be human. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that transition and the triggers and the focus and all the ways that the mind steps back in and then integrating that into the illusion. I mean, in truth, it's, it's not, it, it is super simple. It's so simple, but um, it's so easy to get drawn back in the gravity of the illusion. Like you say, I don't know if you guys, the matrix, as you call it, you know, it's the gravity can be so strong. So um, what was your question? What are you hosting at your house? Is yeah, it a gathering? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> la, la, la. <laughs> That's funny. I can't even think of a straight sentence anymore. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> So, so we just finished this uh, eight-week um, activation, leadership activation. Really amazing, quite intimate. Um, there was that, and then she's got the other group online, the Starseed. I don't even know the names of these groups. but um, So I think there's about eight or nine of us from all over the place, really. One gal is coming from, or two people are coming from Quebec and a few from the States. And I think two or three of us are local. So we're all, they needed a place to come to. So we're going to come here to our place. Awesome. And there's a, yeah, there's a gal in Vancouver who really wants to start a, um, um, a grid point here on the island. And uh, again, if I were to start that on my own, I could still very much tell myself how busy I am. Oh, I'm too busy. I don't have time for these things. But, you know, <laughs> it's ridiculous. But that, you know, you know how it is. You fill your time. It's ridiculous. But with her also having that strong pull to start something here, it starts to just unfold organically. You know what I mean? You just make space for it and then people show up. And so we'll see. We're going to hang out, but in truth, I barely want to talk. I want to, I want to share space with these people and I want to merge hearts. I want to know what it feels like to be in physical presence with other people. And it almost becomes telepathic. You know, I want to raise that energy. And I don't know if you guys have had a chance to do that, but I have it in quite some time and raise that energy in a circle of people and then see what creativity comes from that. Um, yeah, and I'm also in touch quite a bit with Hina and Callie, and I think Callie, I don't know if Hina, doesn't matter, but these two girls too are really going in that direction, and it's, um, it's exciting. Yeah, so gathering here is just a matter of playing with that, and I don't know, I have no expectations. Uh, anyone is welcome, and uh, we'll see, and what comes of it, we'll share. Beautiful. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Beautiful. That's beautiful. And yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah, we definitely, to what you were saying before about having these calls and then really integrating, you know, I think that we, um, you know, opening up a space for this kind of connection worldwide, like I've been experiencing such a heart opening and, and sharing space with people and creating a field online that is definitely something that we want to be doing is creating community that can, we can support each other and integrate in this and into our lives. And uh, yeah. what you're hosting, Brigitte, we haven't had the opportunity in the, in the physical for a while, but uh, so that's, that's fantastic. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm really noticing that it's so much easier to connect with people. Like even just when you guys started this call to just open my heart, I could feel you right away. It's not just you guys. Like it's, you know, it's so amazing how that's starting to happen. So to have that happen then, um, I'm just thinking of the community that was in Amsterdam for quite some while. They probably had the same thing. I don't know. I haven't spoken with them directly, but 
that's pretty fucking powerful. Like it's part of my French, but it just gets so exciting. It's amazing. So that, that is what I'm looking to nurture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can, I can relate to that, Bridget, immediately because it's been, it, it was in Amsterdam for two months or maybe one, I don't know, actually. And it was, I guess, the most powerful month of my whole life. Mm. Right. Um, yet at the same time it was so much that it was like too much for the whole nerve system to to get it all in that's why it broke up again and that's why everybody separated again and the story then the nice thing is the stories continue like the separate stories continue but to be in a big group and hold this together it was just too much it was too much mm. wow so. too, too much how frank like this really intrigues me yeah, if that's yeah. okay so that's that because there's no there's nothing too much because everything is already here so what was it was again it was too much for the bodies i guess mm. for the nerve system to hold this and to carry this throughout your your whole day i mean mm. If you if you think about it, it's interesting. Like, bless you. Like Thank 90, you. 90, 95 percent of our surroundings and of our life is within the system. So, if you want to step out of it, mm. it's a big blast. You know, it's like a big blast. And yeah. if you do that with twenty people, it's you know, it's huge. Yeah. So I, so I, 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 I acknowledge ahead. that you're doing it with three people. That's really cool. And I'm really curious. Mm-hmm. Well, there'll be more. There'll be nine. I don't know if we're going to take it to that, um, to that extent. Um, but at some time, I, maybe I'm an envelope pusher. I don't know. But I hear what you're saying. And having touched into that on my own, um it excites me to experience what you're talking about and perhaps like you say in shorter stints or smaller groups or something a bit more manageable but can we exist from that space right now like not now on this call because like oh you know (laughs) you know what i mean can we are we ready for that well yeah two, two things it's yes and it's and it's no of course we are we are capable of it But at the same time, it took a long time to get all these systems into our body. You know, it's like what Teresa and and, and Stephen were telling. These systems are so deeply within us that to get rid of them or to get, you know, reprogram it, it takes a time. It takes also a long time. So did you find, though, that being in community like that, that that helps you? I mean, I think this is a re- redundant question, but that mm-hmm. um, it helped you um, anchor that in because you were in a setting with more people doing the same. I think what it did that it just showed me the possibility. Mm. Like mm. everything, like Facebook shows us the possibility of connection to all people around the world. Like this was, it, it just showed us like wow this is so you know we can live with this um yeah and now what i'm doing now is stepping back again mm. um, into my own life and from that point i'm gonna build it slowly step by step it does again. feel like um brigitte what you've crafted there is a beautiful kind of first step <laughs> We, we tried so we we're in the midst of trying something similar with Costa Rica and very naturally mm. certain people are attracted to it certain people are kind of falling into the field of it and we're not trying to to lead it or turn it into something just sort of like what you've got there it seems like a kind of a first step a nice little dip in the pool and then from there sort of um, see what materializes rather than kind of calling it ahead of time like okay now we're going to come together and build community you know um it's really more like let's just get together and sort of see what this field wants to express and create and feel like and that's sort of the the um 
it sounds like that's kind of like what Frank and what we're feeling too. You know, the thing that occurred to me while you were sharing, Frank, was that, <clears throat> you know, the field we share is, is a very real one and that the, the learnings from Amsterdam in that very, very crucible period of time feel like they've kind of filtered into um, everybody who kind of shares that space, all that the learning just kind of it, it, it's it's sort of the the whole field has been upgraded if you will and that now there's this kind of a, um a, a next sort of uh iteration of that will naturally form probably through exactly the kinds of um interactions that brigitte's describing which i had no idea was even on the table that's well, really we're cool. also really interested in this notion of how long it takes to or like like to deprogram or to or to to just be the creator, right? Like some people would say, and and we all know you can just be it right now. <laughs> you can just be it right now, you know. And uh, and our path was one of like you know really like deconstructing, and that's been our experience. And we also keep coming into contact with people who have had a much just a, a quicker I don't know like a quicker awakening, but just like a like like Nazara with the irreversible like I mean she had a path leading up to that right but then there was this there's this irreversible moment you know and we've been talking to some people about their experiences with plant medicine and there's just a lot of I don't know there's different paths and I think that it's getting faster you know like our path has not been fast I guess it kind of feels like it has been fast in the course of a human life but um you know we have like our lifetimes are fairly short um but you know but I think it's getting faster so like we're really interested in this notion of like ways for it to be just not so much effort necessarily or like the long-term deconstruction even though that's what we have experienced ourselves like i do think even our experience of it is getting faster like our our ability to kind of like be more just be it just be it is like it's it's coming faster it's coming faster than it used to like i used to see a pattern and like i would be like i can't get out of this and i would just like wrestle 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 and like it'd be like days i'd be in it you know and now it's like usually it's like within a few moments and then I can return, you know? So it's, it's, it's amazing. And I think that would be something maybe we talk about in a future web webinar is this sort of like the acceleration of the path because mm -hmm. it, I think it's happening faster and it's happening faster for people at younger ages and you know, all of that. Yeah. So. That's really interesting how so many uh, fascinating people are, are much younger than uh, me um, given their, um, I guess the, the lack of their exposure to the old program, if you will. Um, nevertheless, uh, <clears throat> we are, I am where I am. Old <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing too, Stephen. You know that. Uh, well, guys, we have to go. We have no. a 1.30 Pacific Time interview with Teresa Yanaros, uh, the um, creator of the Divine Frequency YouTube channel. She's really tight with Corey Good should be really interesting, but we got to scarf down a little lunch. <laughs> so those we didn't get to talk to, Gigi and Lone and uh, and Risha, we're like we love the love seeing you here. And if you have any like anything you want to share after or on a on a future webinar, please join. Like we sorry we didn't get a chance to get to everyone sharing because we want more time for that in the future. Um in future uh, webinars. But it's really great to see you guys Beautiful. and to share this Thank space you, with you. Um, thank you for, for being here, for your contribution. It's been wonderful. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Bye, guys. guys.